I'm going to pick up from the last video. In the last video, I showed how to do what, what I was saying in resolving at design time and um, to, to be able to, um, to, to do an alias. And I used the model uh, objects inside of optics. And that was over here. So I'm going to go ahead and close the uh, emulator down. And I created a my pump um, object and we converted it to a type and then we were able to uh, to reuse that object multiple times and then on each one of these my pumps basically we had uh you know three variables in there label running and speed and then pump one i was able to define what i wanted to be pump two and pump three and then we just uh deployed uh the uh, the face plate or the base object the widget uh three times and we linked it to the alias my pump one two and three so uh show that in the last video uh what i didn't show just to kind of um, if you haven't seen this before in the optics studio be it the desktop or the cloud based if you hit this question mark here at the top uh brings us to the help file and uh, there was a section on aliases, and just to the better define an alias um, per the optics help file, an alias is a variable type that points to a source node with a node ID property. And this allows you to uh, have instances of an object display different values. And if you uh, recall, we had there was a node ID, um, you know, uh, basically there on the alias when we created the alias. The other thing I would like to show, you know, since we're here in the help file, is that there is actually an alias tutorial, which talks about building a motor management dashboard, which is kind of similar to what I'm doing here. Uh, but this tutorial basically shows uh, doing the, the, uh, the model objects like I did in the previous video. So what I do this time, though, is I want to use a Logix UDT or user defined uh, or user data type. So back in Studio 5000, I went ahead and made a UDT, and I just called it Pump UDT, and I basically mimicked exactly what I did there in the model for the, for the pump. I had a label, which is a string, I have the running, which is a bool, and I have a speed, which is a reel. And then I went ahead and uh, created three instances of that UDT and I called it pump one, pump two, and pump three. Now this is Studio 5000 and I am connected to uh, my Logix Echo emulator. So this is actually a running controller right now. You can see that I am connected and I am running. And I went ahead and put some values in for label, running, and speed for each one of the pumps. So pump one, I gave it a label of pump 101A. Uh, right now it's off and zero speed. Uh, pump two, I go, called it pump 201-B. It's running at a speed of 75. And pump three is pump 301C uh, running at a speed of 45. So I can change these values on the fly here once, once we, once we um, go into the emulator and, and see how it works on optics. So going back to optics, first thing I want to do is I'm not going to actually delete all of these instances of the pump info that I've already created. What I want to do is I'm going to, um, at some point, I'm going to change the alias over from my pump one, which was these model objects, to the UDT that, that we'll import here in a second. So what I'm going to do is being that we're going to now use a live controller, I'm going to come here to com drivers. I can also come back here to dashboard and uh, do it here in the widget or the wizard. I think I'll go ahead and do this this route. The other object, object, uh, option is I can right click on com drivers and say new RA Ether and IP driver. But I'll, I'll use this. So I'm going to say new station. I'm going to choose RA Ethernet IP. The route is the IP address which happens to be the, the loopback for the emulator, which is the 127.0.0.1. That's what's uh, defined here in uh, my Logix Echo 
emulate a controller. And I'm going to hit next. Now it gives it a name, RA Ethernet IP Station 1. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it Echo CPU just to kind of make it a little bit shorter and more um, in line with what it actually is. So this is where we can import our tags. So I'm going to go ahead and do an online import. It went out and read the controller tags. So these are all that I've created so far in here. So those are those are our uh, UDTs, pump one, two, and three. Go ahead and select all and say next. And then everything's been successful. So we say exit. So what I want to show is now that we've imported our tags, we now have the echo CPU. And then under the tags, controller tags, there's pump one, two, and three. So there's label running speed, label running speed, label running speed. But if I come to types, also underneath that echo CPU, I, I see data types, pump UDT, and variable types, pump UDT. And it is actually a type already. So I didn't have to convert it to a type like I did up here when I had to uh, do that with my, my pump model. Now I want to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and delete um, this model out just to sh just so that we don't have any um, just so we don't uh, have any doubt that it's still reading the old data that I had uh, already created. I'm going to go ahead and create the, uh, the the data type altogether. So two things we got to do now. Um, we're going to come back to our our pump info. So this was our base uh, widget or faceplate that we created. And if I click on this, I had already made an alias, right? I, I had hit the add new in the previous video and I said add an alias and I called the alias my pump alias. So that that I'm not changing. Oops. That I'm not going to change. So the alias is already created and it's called my pump alias and that's good. What I'm going to change is the, the kind. So it got unresolved since I deleted the model uh, here a second ago. So when I say kind, I'm going to come down now to com drivers, the RA Ethernet IP, Echo CPU, types, and the pump UDT type. And then since I kind of set this up uh, nicely, I don't have to actually change the um, any of the, the definitions down here for the three things that we were doing. We had a label, we had the speed, and we had the pump running indicator. And we didn't, we weren't using these two um, on off switches for this example. So for the label, uh, it's still my pump alias and it's just tied to the label. Uh, for the speed, it's my pump alias and it's tied to the speed. And for the running, it's tied to my pump alias running. So when I created my UDT in the logics controller, I kept all those names the same. Now, coming back to our pump one screen. So here's where I had the three instances, pump one, pump two, and pump three. So since I deleted the, the model there, now this shows as unresolved. So for my pump alias, I'm going to just bring this down to uh, my controller com drivers once again and choose pump one. For pump two, we'll do the same thing. Go down here to uh, com drivers tags controller tags pump two and lastly for pump three instance we will do the same thing now remember that in this example we're doing what's called resolving a design time meaning that i'm i'm hard setting this in the configuration here in design time um, still need to show 
how we can do this dynamically by indexing, but I'm going to just do it this way uh, for this video. So that's that's it. Um, again, I, I set a lot of the pre-work up in the previous video uh, as far as you know defining all these um, you know objects that are on the uh, each of the, on the widget and, and kind of linking them. So that was kind of done already, but I just had to re-link these to these the um, to the new uh, to the new uh, UDTs that were that were imported in. So I'll go ahead and save this. And now we'll just we'll go to the emulator. So here we are. Emulator is up, and we we passed in from the UDTs just like uh, just like we'd set up. So uh, the label is reading the label from the UDT. Uh, it's not running to the speed of zero. The uh, pump two two hundred one dash B seventy five and running. And pump three is 301-C, it's about 45 and running. Now, being that I'm now connected to my uh, logics controller, if I change this value, we see that it changed right there in the controller. And if I change this value, we see a change in the controller. So, so definitely UDT, uh, bringing that in, importing, and then we can we can uh, pass those into each one of these widgets, faceplates like this. So pretty easy way to go. So again, uh, like I said, this was this resolving at design time, meaning that I obviously set all this up in the, in the application itself. And then once it's deployed, it's kind of set. Um, our, our next video in this sequence will be how can we actually index those UDTs and maybe use one widget and just say, okay, and this, this time we open up the widget, let's choose pump one, let's index it to pump one. Uh, next time, you know, we could maybe choose what's indexed to pump two and et cetera. So we'll dynamically change that. And that will be what we'll call resolving at runtime.